Okay, let's go over what we need to do our thread painted mandala today. First, you're gonna need your background fabric, and I use batting, so you need a back and a front out of your fabric, and then one piece of batting. So two fabrics, one, fa one batting. You're gonna need a foot for your sewing machine for free motion. I use a Bernina 570, and I use the 24 foot mostly, and that has the opening in the front, so I can actually see what I'm doing. And then you could use the nine foot. Some people may only have the nine foot where it's a full ring, that works as well. And then for needles, you're gonna need, um, I like to use the gold embroidery needles from Schmidt. These are number 75 because we are gonna use some thicker threads and I find these, I have less thread breakage with this needle. Then you're going to need a way to transfer your design. You can use Clover Ch Choco copy paper. There's silky iron-on pens, transfer pens. Uh, you can use a light box and a window if your fabric is thin enough, um, but you will need to transfer your design. You'll need the printout for the framework in which we're going to draw our design. I give you the four inch and the six inch hoop size. You're going to need embroidery hoops, and then we need the thread. So this project is all about the Aurifil Bird of Prey thread. This is a color builder, part of the color builder, um, and this one includes 2130, 3920, and 4657. And this is this month or this year's block of the month with them. And it's these beautiful flowers that are paper pieced. So you could certainly check those out. And here are the threads. So one is solid and then two are variegated. This is a very, very light yellow variegated. We have the orange variegated and then we just have the nice solid yellow to kind of tie them together. I'm also using, and these are 50 weight. So that's important. These are our 50 weight. 50 weight is the the weight thread you should use for piecing and quilting. Um, it's the most popular one. You can use other threads, but those are the most popular ones. So we're gonna be using those mainly. I did pull another two colors of 50 weight in orange to kind of wrap uh, round these out. And then you're gonna want a bobbin thread, 50 weight bobbin thread that is complementary to it. So originally I used like a gray in my bobbin and then I was using the yellows and sometimes if I was going too fast my stitch would pop up. So it does make your life a little easier to pick a bobbin that is going to blend with your colors. Then I am also using 28 weight thread. I find 28 weight thread from Aurifil is wonderful to fill in the bigger areas um, and it does give you some more impact. And then I also want to share with you 12 weight thread, which is a little bit trickier to use, but we're going to use it and I'm going to show you how I do that. But these are all on the top of your machine and this is the only thing you need in your bobbin is the 50 weight thread. So now that we've gone over all the stuff you need, let's get started. Now that we have all our supplies together, I'm going to move these out of the way here, and we are going to go ahead and draw our mandala design. Now mandalas can look like this. This is a very elaborate looking one, but very, very simplistic. You're just repeating your shape all the way around the circle. So there's that one. Then there's this guy here. Here's another one. This is just line art. Um, but again, just to give you an idea of what they look like. And there's tons of resources online about how to draw mandalas, how to create your frame in which to draw your mandala on. Um, I've given you two here, one for a four inch hoop and one for a six inch hoop. Um, but please, if you really get into this, there's plenty of places to find them. So basically what I have learned is like sometimes they'll do a little bit of art right here in the middle. Um, and that's a little tight to sew with. So I like to have a bigger pie wedge there. And so this is where you can, I'm just going to do like a, a reverse arc in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, and if I don't like this, I'm using a Frixen pen, which uh, are available. I'll put the link below. Um, you can just erase the pen. I love this. We use it for quilting, but I found I, I'm starting to use it in all of my drawing and office stuff, um, especially in here where I want to see it against the gray. So we've got that. And maybe I'll do another couple of lines in here. 
everyone is very, very different. And they can be, I love it because it can be very, very freeing. You don't have to be perfect. Somehow it always looks nice in the end. Um, and then we've got, and you don't have to stay within my rings or you can add more rings. I'm just giving you um, something to start with. And, uh, I can show you some drawings. I'll put them up here like I did at one. All it makes it look like steampunk pipes. So you can do whatever you want. Um, but we're going to keep this one pretty simplistic. Well, I'm going to just keep drawing and I'm going to speed this up. And I'm going to draw two of them at the same time because we're going to have two examples. And you'll see just how these just sort of evolve, especially since right now I have no idea what these are going to look like because I am just drawing it. Okay, so there's the little guy. We're gonna transfer that over there in just a minute. And now we've got the big guy. Now this one only had one, two, three, four dividing lines. And this one has eight. So now I have more segments so the design can become more complex. Okay, so there are two mandalas. Now we need to transfer it onto our fabric. And like I said, if your fabric is white, you could lay it on there and see through it or use a light box and draw it through using a friction pen. Friction pen. Um, or you can use the Chaco tracing paper. Or I got these iron-on transfer pens. Fastest and easiest way. Okay, so we're gonna try this iron-on transfer pen. I'm using the red, so what you do, you're gonna end up with a mirror image of what you've got. So according to the directions, we are just going to trace everything with the transfer pen. So knowing this, you could have drawn the whole thing with the transfer pen, but I do like drawing it first with the friction pen so that if I make a mistake or it doesn't look quite balanced, I can always change it. So this does help me kind of plan out my design a little before I commit to the iron pencil. So I'm really intrigued how this might work because supposedly I'm just going to draw this and then I'm gonna take my f over to the ironing board with my iron and iron it down and it's going to transfer. Okay, so that is all traced. And I'm gonna set up my iron so you guys can see if this works along with me. So let me get that set up. All right, so I've got my fabric on my ironing board and I've got my iron all heated up. Now I have to be really careful because I drew this with a friction pen. So if I touch this design, I'm going to lose what I've drawn. This one is the one that we've gone over with the iron on transfer pen. So we wanna get this hot without getting that hot. Let's see how well we do. Now this says that you just lay it on your fabric where you want it, ink side down. And then let's just double check here, make sure I do this right. It says best results preheat the surface. All right. And then lay your piece down and then um, hold the transfer in place and try use a dry iron down firmly. Move it slightly to avoid light impressions under the steam holes. 
And then after 20 to 30 seconds of shifting the transfer pattern, lift the corner to see if the design has transferred to your satisfaction. All right, so we're gonna do this in the center here because I wanna put it in a bigger hoop to be able to sew it. We've got that down, and now we're gonna take the iron, we're gonna hold this in place, and we're gonna go back and forth. Now they're saying go back and forth so that um, if you just push it down, anywhere there's these steam holes, it won't get as much heat, so it would be lighter, so that's why it's saying move it back and forth. Okay, so we're just gonna keep doing this. Should have done a timer or something, because, you know, I have no idea. There we go. So that now, without moving this, I'm going to hold this in place and I'm gonna lift this up. <gasps> and look at that. It transferred. Oh, it's a little light over there, but I can still see it. I probably should have done a little more, but how cool is that? So these are the Sulky Permanent Ink Iron-On Transfer Pens. I have a red one and a blue one that I bought, and that's impressive. All right, so that is how to transfer one design. And then what you need to do is I like to layer a piece of batting in between my layers. So we're gonna go ahead and just do this. So now I have cotton, I have batting, and then I have cotton. And I'm going to take my hoop that I'm gonna be working with. Now eventually this little guy is gonna go in this hoop. But um, I'm going to stitch him in the bigger hoop and you can get these are inexpensive you can get them on Amazon um, so I have room to manipulate around my design so and then we'll put it in this hoop so that is the next step there's that so then how I do this for on my machine is I open the hoop up as wide as it will go because we are trying to put a piece of batting in there and we're going to put the hoop so that it is backwards. So normally you would put the back of the hoop here and you would have it so it sits like this. We want it to sit down in the hoop so it's flat on my sewing machine bed. So we're gonna go ahead and place the hoop on top. And we're gonna slide the top underneath. And I'm just, right now, I'm just trying to gauge how much to cut away. Okay, so now I have trimmed my fabric and batting to the right size. And so I'm gonna put the bottom ring in there. And I want the hardware at the top so it's kinda of out of my way, though we are gonna rotate this so maybe it doesn't make that much of a difference. And we're just going to press this down into the ring. And you wanna make sure it's nice and snug like a drum. So I hold everything and I tug it up Make it nice and tight. Okay, so there it is. And then I push this together and I... Doodles. Do you wanna say hi to everybody? Is that what you're barking at? All right, so then we're gonna tighten the hardware up. And this is snug, but not totally snug. So we're just gonna keep working around, just slowly pulling while holding the two, like I have my hand on the back of the ring, my thumb on the front, and I'm just tugging it and making it nice and snug. All right, so this is the one I just did on camera, and then I went ahead and I did this one. Now, a couple things I figured out for the Sulky Iron-On Transfer Pen is one, the more heat you do, the more vibrant it is, but it also will bleed through to another layer of fabric. So I had two pieces of fabric, it, it bled through. So just make sure if you use it that you don't do it on something you don't want the design to transfer to. Maybe put a piece of wax paper or parchment paper behind it um, or a scrap piece of fabric you don't care about and iron it that way. The other thing is upon reading this, it is transfer. It says make permanent non-bleeding transfers. Um, so it does say that you can wash it and it'll wash out and it says you can erase it with a pencil. Do it all. So it does say you can erase it with a pencil. So let me just see if that's true. Not really, not really. But it does say it can wash out, so I will try that, but just be aware that it is 
It is advertising it as permanent, so it is permanent. If you are not confident in your design and you want something you can erase, then I recommend getting some Chaco copy paper from Clover or some dressmaker transfer paper. It works just like carbon paper. You put it on top of your fabric, you put your drawing on top of that and you trace through and you would be able to have a chalk line drawing which will go away when you're done. So those are just two options. There's many, many ways to uh, transfer an embroidery design on fabric, but that's not what this video is about. So I would definitely just say, check out the internet. There are lots of things to do. All right, so we're gonna take our beautiful threads and we're gonna head over to the machine and we are going to stitch these guys up for you. Okay, so we're over here at our sewing machine with our little mandala that we're gonna stitch. And I have my feet ducks down. I have my embroidery foot on, which is the uh, foot for free motion quilting. And so my machine is set up as if I'm free motion quilting. I have my needle and the needle down position if you have that feature and I need to thread my needle because I just unthreaded it and then we're ready to start our stitching now on my machine uh, you can control the speed of your stitch so on mine I've got my speed turned almost all the way down I don't do a lot of free motion quilting and so I'm not very good at controlling my speed so with the feet dogs down, you control how fast you move your pieces, how helps how long your stitches are. Um, so this is the same principles as hand as free motion quilting, but we're going to do it in a very controlled way. So this is also a really good way to practice your free motion quilting. So we're going to start here in the middle and I'm going to do my lines and then I'm going to go around. And I'm using the 50 weight variegated yellow that came in the Birds of Prey thread kit from Orphil. So the first thing you do is you pull your bobbin thread up. We're going to bring the, pull the threads to the back because I don't want them getting in my way. And I've hand cranked the needle down again and I'm putting my presser foot down and here we go. Now my machine has a knotting feature, so you can just knot and move, or you could pick it up and drag it, um, which I call traveling. It's totally up to you how you move across your piece. Either way will work. And when I start something or I stop, I might do a couple stitches in place. Um, so that was the first one I cut. This one I'm gonna travel. So I don't break the thread, I drag it to where I want to go and I will clip the threads, attaching threads afterwards. But again, I will stitch one or two stitches in place to knot it before I go ahead and do the rest of the, the row. And the same thing at the end. And one more. Sometimes I think it's easier to travel than to clip your thread, cut knot and do your threads, um, but do whatever is most comfortable. And now that we're at the end, I'm going to go through before I go around and I'm going to get rid of all my little threads so that they don't get in my way as I stitch around the shape because now we're not going through it, we're just going around it. Okay, so again. All right, so that's all stitched. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline everything and then we're gonna go back and fill what we wanna fill in. So that is the yellow variegated. And now I'm going to switch out, so there's the yellow variegated, and I'm going to switch this out for the orange variegated. And I'm not changing my bobbin thread. My bobbin thread is that nice buttercup yellow. It's also 50 weight, so we're just going to keep that in no matter what the top thread weight is. On your machine, you may have to mess with your tension. Um, I'm lucky enough to have one that if the tension is set and we're doing pretty good. Uh, hopefully that won't jinx me later in the project. For all you guys who know about the threader on your Bernina, I don't use it. I don't know why. I just don't. So don't judge me, but don't don't be panicked when I don't use it. 
All right, so again, I'm going to go down. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up. Okay, so now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go across the bottom and around that little loop, across the bottom, around the little loop. So I'm now creating another secondary pattern using my different color threads. So here we go again. You see I stop and rotate if I'm not. Now I'm doing free motion so I should be able to just pull it sideways like this. But sometimes I just feel it it's easier to see it to just turn the piece. So because this is a variegated thread, I'm going to actually go all the way around what I just did, but I'm just going to stitch just next to where I stitched to kind of make like a double effect and see how that looks. I have not done this before, but I think it'll make it look really cool. So you want to go slow and steady because you're trying to follow you what you've already done without crossing over it and going too far away from what you've already done. So this is actually a lot harder because you're trying to control your machine. And I can tell you, I already messed it up, but you know, I've also learned that the more you stitch on these, that's not going to show. And if it really bothers me, I could pull that out. So yes, I tend to turn my piece a lot because I want it to be comfortable for what I'm trying to see. Because this is literally drawing with your sewing machine. Which, if you think about it, is kind of what quilting is. But this is all about the drawing and not a secondary design that you're putting on your quilt that you've pieced. Sometimes if you are not liking something, it's not super even or something, like I can already tell by doing a third line, you're not going to notice my imperfections. My imperfections actually become part of the design and it looks like I did them on purpose. And so sometimes more is better to fill it in and make it feel a little heavier and a lot more freehand feeling. This is very much a freehand project not controlled. I mean, you certainly could do one of these controlled, but for your first one, let's not, you know, let's just learn how to do it and not try to be perfect and not try to be precise. You're just, you know, playing with thread and fabric and seeing what you get. Okay. So now we're going to knot that. And you can now see what that looks like. So next up, I'm going to use the lovely yellow that came with the, the box of Bird of Paradise. Okay, so now we're going to do the yellow and we're going to go in between here. But when I go around in between here, I'm actually not going, I'm going to go right over my stitching. The, it looks better if you flow versus trying to, um, stop and start, stop and start, stop and start. So we're going to make that part of the drawing and make it deliberate that we're doing it on purpose. And that's going to make our life a lot easier as well. Because again, you want to do this and have fun with it and not be stressed by it. So what I mean by what I'm saying is I'm going to go up, I'm going to get rid of my tails, And I'm going to go down and I'm going to cross, go right over what we were just stitching. And you can't even see it. It just becomes part of the design because I did that other one three times. So we did all that in yellow 
And now I'm gonna again echo it, but this time I'm really gonna make it very, a lot of space in between, mainly because this is a nice simple shape. So it makes it really easy for me to do that. And this isn't anything I had planned. I'm just letting the design kind of tell me what it wants to be. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this orange, I'm gonna fill in and thread paint this interior. And it's a solid color, so I can go around and I can go around again, and it doesn't really matter because it's all the same color. Now, if I was to fill that whole thing with variegated, I would try to get as dense as I can and not have to go over it multiple times because the variegated colors will fall in different areas each time and can make it look splotchy. Um, I've had mixed results doing um, that going around and around with a variegated thread, but when I just work in one area and try to fill it all at one time, the variegated threads look really pretty, and I'll show you that in a piece a little bit later. All right, so let's go ahead and paint this. And to do thread painting, you're just going to go down and then go up next to yourself and down and go slow and try not to stay on the same spot too long. Now I've already outlined this one um, and I find it easier to outline the background first or outline the shape first and then go back in and paint it. And see sometimes your thread will break if you go too fast or too slow. It's gonna happen so you just you know re-thread and regroup and keep going um, and you can adjust try checking your tension um, sometimes you need to change your needle if it happens over and over and over but what just happened there was I think I pulled the piece as I was sewing a little too fast and it was strain on the thread and it broke that is definitely a thing that's gonna happen with thread painting So I'm turning my speed up a little. And when you do thread painting, you want to go in the same direction. You don't want to go up and down and back and forth unless you're trying to create that as a special a technique so with thread painting everything is deliberate if you go one direction you're doing it deliberately if you're leaving background space you know that's you don't want that to look like a mistake you want to be consistent um, you don't want to go back and up and down and back and forth unless you want to create that as a texture and if you accidentally do something just consi be consistent about it and suddenly the mistake becomes a design design decision so you know you can fix it without taking it out you just may have to change your vision a little trust me we do it all the time and you can see it's starting to give some weight to the mandala as trying to um, it gives it some solidity it can be yeah, I kind of left it just thread lines and it would have been very ethereal I have one done that way but I do think adding some color by filling in areas adds to the mandala. Okay, so you can see, I'm gonna show you, you can see there's blue background still sticking out. I normally wouldn't cut it out and show you, but um, I wanna show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna go around it one more time. And like here, I can see I need to fill this in a little more. Um, so this is my cleanup round. There we go. It's all filled in. So now I want to fill these in yellow, but I want to make sure, I think I want to still do another echo in here with another color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to echo it with the yellow variegated.
So there is our little mandala. I have gone ahead and cut, first I laid this on here and I traced it and then I cut this about a half inch bigger. You can see it's kind of rough. Okay, and that's so that I can put the frame on this. Inside how I want to put the frame, make sure it's centered. And there is our little, whoops. <laughs> There's the little mandala in its frame. And now I'm going to create this like a yo-yo. I'm going to tuck under the edge and do a running stitch all the way around. And then we're going to pull it tight around the frame to finish this. So let me go get a needle and thread and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so now that I have my th needle threaded and knotted, what I'm going to do is fold under the edge about a quarter inch. And this is, this is just a rough running stitch. We're just going in and out as I fold under the edge. That way we have a finished edge and a running stitch. There we go. There's our little thing and there's the back all pulled together tight. And you can put a little ribbon on the top and you've got yourself your mandala. All done. <laughs>